Welcome everyone to today's Performance Clinic Extensions 2.0 Framework Simplify Root Cause Analysis to any of your observability data sources. This is part of my Cloud Automation Unlimited season of Performance Clinics. My name is Andy Grabner. I've been doing this for quite a while, but today I just learned that Chris, uh, kind of the first guest that I want to give the word to introduce himself, has been for the, in the company for even much longer than I've been. Hi, Chris. How are you? Thanks, Andy. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in you today uh, running this uh, performance clinic. Uh, we will spend time uh, looking into the extensions uh, framework and uh, some uh, insights into the extensions themselves uh, will be given during this uh, clinic. Before starting myself, uh, I will give a word to Wukash to introduce himself mm -hmm. as well. Sure, welcome everyone. Um... My name is Łukasz Berezowski. Uh, I'm a senior product manager responsible for the extension framework 2.0. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, and as Chris said, we'll be discussing uh, extensions 2.0, uh, the framework itself, what does it mean, how does it look like? And uh, also in my part, uh, I will present to you how exactly and what does it consist of when we talk about uh, Prometheus extensions. Perfect. With this, yeah. Chris, I think I'll hand it over to you. Folks, remember, if you have questions, like the first one already came in, use the Q&A feature in Zoom. I will moderate. But now, with a lot of content, mm -hmm. let's go. OK, let's go. As Andy said, we have uh, a lot of content today to walk through. So this will be rather, rather fast pace. Uh, don't hesitate to ask uh, questions. We can't guarantee that we will answer them all, but we will try as much as we can. So starting with uh, the introduction, uh, what is about uh, extensibility? We always have to start uh, think about this when we look at Dynatrace as a uh, whole ecosystem that is uh, designed to collect metrics from everywhere. You know that uh, with one agent, we can monitor everything that runs on the host that one agent is monitoring. However, very often we also need to look deeper into the technologies that are there. Not all of them may be monitored out of the box with one agent. Some technologies don't accept agents like devices, network devices and things of that nature. Extensions also cover them. So extensibility is about getting beyond what the agent is uh, really able to do. And the extensibility concept itself is not new in Dynatrace either. Those who have been with us uh, for several years know that uh, Dynatrace really starts with uh, deep uh, transaction level visibility and code level visibility into the applications that uh, you are running in your infrastructures. And naturally those applications are running on some infrastructure. So with those points together, in order to connect them, that's what one agent is doing. And uh, that works within the Dynatrace uh, ecosystem in a way that is very familiar to you. We have uh, one agents, we have gates, active gates that are transferring this data to the Dynatrace cluster, which then provides analytics and uh, data insights. However, if we would like to uh, enhance our visibility into the technologies that one agent is not covering, we need to extend this. And this is what extensions are about. In, uh, in a former incarnation of extensions, we call them plugin as well. Therefore, we have these uh, puzzle pieces very often uh, exemplifying what extensions do. So we can install them on one agents, we can install them on active gates, and they will connect to the technologies that they are about to monitor in a way that best fits that technology. That is, the extensions may just extend one agent capabilities or they may connect to the external devices from active gates. Either way, we end up with the data that is enhancing the Dynatrace entity model. And the entity model uh, and enhancements means that all the data that we collect has context. The context is being given by both the fact that we already have agents which are recognizing the uh, the application landscape, and the fact that we can make context out of data. Uh, this thing uh, has been discussed in one of the past performance clinics with Wolfgang Beer to, to a large extent. And I will just mention that this uh, concept of extensibility on the topological level is also used with the extensions. 
Scalability comes natural with Dynatrace. Everything that we already have in context of uh, active gates and one agents that uh, let us run at the really enterprise scale are also applicable to extensions. And extensions framework 2.0, if we think about this, is really uh, giving that extensibility concept also uh, to, the, uh, to the extensions. Uh, last not least, security. As uh, Dynatrace is an application that is uh, connecting deep with uh, the uh, applications that it monitors, extensions are also benefiting from the same top-notch uh, security practices that uh, one agent is uh, providing. So what is the framework itself? Those who are using Dynatrace uh, already are familiar with the concept of the extensions because uh, this already exists within the Dynatrace. We call it now extensions 1.0. And uh, this concept has been very successful. We have lots of extensions that are built in into the product. And we have lots of extensions that have been developed by our services organizations, by partners, by you, the customers as well. So we can already tell that we are somewhat even a victim of our success. here. So many extensions, so many different technologies monitored. Uh, however, all of this, the way how it started, it is now very challenging to scale. And we had to stop this kind of uh, uh, developments and make it an organized effort where we will uh, achieve the scalability, security, and performance systematically from the Dynatrace platform app, so you wouldn't have to care about this. And this is really what the extensions 2.0 are about, to make it really enterprise grade, so you wouldn't have to care about delivering the extensions, running them, and things of that nature. Just focus on the technology that you have to monitor. So, uh, would there be easy transition? I have to announce it up front. No, because of those ways how uh, we are now uh, running extensions at large scale. However, we are not cutting off one platform with another either. This will be a transition through which we will be running with you and moving the extensions use cases from the old framework to the new together with you. And that will be a process that will last. So. Don't worry about uh, any loss of data that uh, you may be thinking about. That's not our intention. We are just not, not taking the thing away. We are uh, taking a journey with you. Now, together with the extensions themselves, you may have noticed that we have uh, introduced uh, already several months ago a concept of Dynatrace Hub. This is an inherent part of extensibility as well. Because of that success that I mentioned, it's uh, also now uh, getting more difficult to find out what Dynatrace can do for you. So with the hub, this thing is easy. Anytime you have a question, can I monitor this? Can I monitor that? Just get to Dynatrace hub, type in the name, and you will get the things that Dynatrace can do for you, either from the built-in extensions or partners or our services. Everything is there. Now, if you have an extension that you get from the hub, what are the next steps? The next steps now with extension framework 2.0 are very easy. In order to enable monitoring of the technology that you have found out, like in this case, I have an example of Cisco. You just click on that tile within the hub. Then you enter the configuration of what exactly do you want to monitor with that extension and done. We will get through this in more details in a moment. But uh, the real difference that the uh, extension framework 2.0 brings is exactly that. For those who have been uh, deploying themselves uh, the extensions 1.0 uh, artifacts, uh, you know what I mean, what kind of change is that. When you get an extension into your environment, uh, it's a complete package that uh, can be uh, the easiest way seen from the perspective of dashboards from which you can drill down to the screens that are uh, explaining what you have seen on the dashboards or even analyze it further uh, to the extent that you can uh, look back to another dashboard that may also come together with uh, the extension. With those workflows, we provide not only metrics and knowledge about them, 
but also means of analyzing the data. And again, I will show you that, that on an example of uh, the five load balancer analysis in a moment. Last not least, uh, anomaly detection. That is alerts that are based on uh, watching the metrics that uh, the uh, extensions are providing are also delivered together with the extension itself. But the most important part of the extensions 2.0 is the way how they are programmed. We programmed the extension data acquisition layer, which we call data source, so you don't have to do it. It's a fundamental change in approach. Compare those two screens. These are uh, just screenshots from, from our uh, source code repository that are uh, referring to the same kind of functionality of an extension of SNMP uh, data acquisition from a device. In extensions 1.0, this is Python code. Basically, you have to write Python code and then handle all the data uh, acquisition uh, workflow, then parse this data, then you get metrics, then you can send them to Dynatrix. Without coding, that's not possible. That's how extensions 1.0 work. With extensions 2.0, all this uh, logic is uh, built into Dynatrace in form of data sources, and we have many of them already. So what you have to do is just to tell it what data do you want and from where. This difference is uh, uh, hard to overestimate. You have code versus no code. This is not only simplicity. This is security because it's predictable. Once you have Dynatrace installed and you want to extend its functionality, you don't have to add code anymore. Your security people will love it. Another aspect. Since we don't have code right now, but we have predictable data sources that are already built in into the product, if we wanted to run it in multiple places from multiple groups, load balance uh, the extension execution and implement failover in case when something goes wrong, we can do it for you. So you don't deploy extension to specific endpoints anymore. You deploy extension to the groups that Dynatrace is managing, like active gate groups in order to load balance the extension execution. They will automatically fail over one to another once they are instructed what they should do. Uh, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, you know where the concepts are coming from. That's exactly the same concept of, you know, you describe what Dynatrace should do, and it takes care of executing the stuff. Right. So knowing uh, what we know by now, let's have a look into what's exactly inside the extension that you get. So you already have uh, probably realized that, that we have the configuration files within the extension, no code. So the key configuration file is the one that describes what we would like to monitor. Other than that, uh, we have uh, dashboards and alerts that describe how to display the data. But since it's a configuration package, it can be executed anywhere, locally on agents or remotely, depending on what kind of monitoring do you want. Of course, there are limitations. For example, executing WMI extension on Linux box make, it makes little sense. But we, again, take care of that so you don't have to. Uh, it's secure because there is no code. So uh, if you would like to add an extension to your production system that already got clearance from your uh, IS, it's just configuration change. It's not, it's not a code change. And it's uh, certified and signed. We are certifying and signing our, our extensions with the certificate so they, they cannot be uh, uh, counterfeited. If you are uh, doing your extensions, you do basically the same thing. So, so you know that this is your extension and your configuration and nobody else is uh, uh, tinkering with it. Declarative approach first, I already mentioned this. So extensions to the zero, I are uh, extensively using the metric ingestion protocol and the topology that uh, Wolfgang uh, introduced in the previous uh, performance clinic. So I wouldn't be getting into the details of those. I just wanted to uh, call out this. So you will have in mind that any kind of data that extensions are now uh, processing and transforming is using the mechanisms that uh, you already 
uh, have seen during the previous performance clinics. This, uh, this lets you imagine what is possible. And let's, uh, let's have a look at those possibilities. Before, before going there, a quick summary. So with extension, what you get? Dashboards, uh, entity screens. These are analysis screens that let you look into the data that is collected for the things that you monitor. Uh, those can be hierarchical because we know the topology of the thing that we monitor. Uh, just by the way, these are metrics today, but you will also be able to configure logs with extensions. That will be coming in a couple of months. We are working on that capability within the extensions as well. Uh, you get alerting rules, uh, alert definitions. So uh, you have uh, out of the box possibilities to analyze the data and alert of them topology rules that come from within the data that the extension is collecting itself along the lines of uh, identification through dimensions of the metrics. And the thing uh, that is kind of obvious, activation settings of how the extension uh, should run. Uh, last not least, we are also working on connecting that extension topology to the whole uh, Dynatrace Davis topology. So just uh, this question will come, I'm sure whether Davis is analyzing the extension data. The answer is uh, it's uh, partial right now. It does when extensions run locally on agents. Uh, we still have work to do with extensions that are working remotely on active gates, but it's, it's something that we are working on. And uh, of course, this topology will be then uh, uh, back uh, feeding the analysis screens. So uh, the possibilities are endless. Right, and you have uh, yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Just a quick, a uh, couple of quick things. First of all, thanks for this great overview. It definitely makes things clear for me. There's a couple of people that have asked questions. I'm not throwing mm -hmm. all of them out right now, but uh, Stephen is, for instance, asking. So plugins and extensions are interchangeable terms, or we're basically moving from the old plugin concept to extensions, where extensions mm -hmm. allow you to configure what we do with the data that comes in, for instance, from the Lion protocol. Correct. Correct. So we are basically using the term extensions mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, we used to use uh, the term plugins to call the old extension extensions. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can still find that term in our documentation, but generally we are getting uh, rid of it mm -hmm. wherever uh, possible. Okay. How about Jason is just asking a question. Will it be possible to still run some custom code that is pulling in data? Uh, like he brings the example of the Linux load uh, where the data was not normalized in their in their part in their environment. Mm -hmm. And so they were building their own plugin that was then pulling the data normalized back to Dynatrace. Will this still be possible? Yeah, so short answer is yes. The longer answer is that there will be multiple ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will provide this ability for you, for example, to run the scripts and then Dynatrace will scrape the data out oh, of perfect. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but we will also be very strict with regard to the, uh, the demarcation line of security. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing that I mentioned before that with Dynatrace, you don't get code by surprise. We will try to, to keep that, right? Mm -hmm. So you will be able to add your code, but this will be your code, not code run mm -hmm. by Dynatrace for you, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no I, I think can, that makes if sense. I can, if I can yeah. call it that way, right? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah. Last question for you. I know you have more content. Are there plans to add any REST APIs to support the 2.0 extensions? Uh, these plans have already materialized. All the configuration, everything that is being done with extensions, everything is available through the REST APIs. So mm -hmm. deployment, configuration, changes, everything, every single thing you can do through UI is available through APIs as well. Perfect. And then Rahul, I see you have more questions, but I think I will wait with them because I think some of them will be probably covered by Lukas later on. And so let's wait if those questions get already answered. But mm -hmm. Chris, mm -hmm. back to you. Okay. So uh, just once again, this the screen of the hub uh, with a number of uh, names of the data sources that we already have uh, at, at your disposal. We have SNMP, we have Prometheus and WMI available today, and we have a number of extensions already developed on the basis of those data sources. You remember that concept, which I mentioned that 
you don't have to write any code, for example, to get Prometheus metrics out. You just configure the extension. You don't have to write any code to get SNMP data out of different devices. Just configure what metrics, what OEs do you want to get. WMI, same thing. If you want to get WMI metrics out, just tell us the queries, the WMI uh, interface queries, we will execute them for you and you tell us how to dissect the data and can convert that into the metrics. That's, that's how it works. So uh, Rahul, you have a question about uh, SQL database. The answer, short answer is we are preparing the SQL database uh, data source as well. So in several months that will come out. So you will be able to also configure it similar way. If you know how WMI works, uh, SQL database monitoring will work similarly, right? Give it, give it the queries, give it the schema, how to transform the data into metrics and you will have, it, right? So this is in the works. Right, so now since we have uh, this thing already covered, the, how, to, how extensions are uh, built, how they work, and what kind of extensions do we have available, let's have a look at one of them uh, in, in a little more uh, depth. So for that purpose, I will now switch to my browser and look at uh, my live system where I will uh, walk you through a, a couple of screens that I have for one of my extensions. So in, in my system, I will be using for that purpose, the F5 Big IP extension that uses SNMP data source to get metrics out of the uh, F5 Big IP load balancer. I have it in my demo system already implemented. And as you can see in the Dynatrace hub that is part of uh, basically the menu, the, the settings menu of Dynatrace, I already have information that for this one, I have my configuration set up. So if I uh, go further there, I can see that I have this extension installed. It is active just by the way, if there were earlier versions, I will also have a list of them. I have some configuration of this extension. It is enabled, but I wanted to show you uh, the other thing, not, not the configuration itself, but how the extension works and how it looks. Now, uh, if you recall the concept that I mentioned in the beginning, so we have uh, metrics that have been collected from SNMP and within those metrics uh, that we are collecting from F5 devices, we already have uh, SNMP OIDs that uh, describe the topology of the uh, F5 load balancer itself. So for those who know how load balancer works, in front of them, they uh, expose virtual servers, the things that to which you connect basically from the internet. Those virtual servers are then processed internally within the load balancer and the requests are being forwarded to the pool members of the pools that the uh, five is running in order to balance the requests. Of course, there may be more than one instance of a five running on physical box. It can be virtualized. And as you can see, all of those things are already reflected in my dashboard that is showing me the metrics that I have collected from a five. So the dashboard itself, uh, there's probably not that much sense in spending time there. These are just metrics visualizations, which you know Dynatrace is good at, and you can build your own dashboards as you want. We have this one for the demonstration purposes, which demonstrates uh, pretty well what we can get out, out of those extensions. So let's dive deeper a little bit here. I have my F5, with, which has virtual servers. So when I click on the virtual servers, now what I get, I'm getting a list of the virtual server instances on my F5. Now, look, this is not dashboard anymore. We call it unified analysis screen that is uh, seamlessly integrated with the dashboard. And uh, those unified analysis screens are uh, showing me the metrics that have been collected from the same F5. And let me uh, dive even deeper on this. So I have those uh, virtual uh, servers here that are running on my F5 instance. I already know to which pool is it collected, connected. This all data came already from my F5. Let's get a bit deeper. So 
with uh, my uh, one virtual server instance, I can of course uh, analyze all the metrics that are being collected by uh, this instance. I wouldn't be going into the details what they do because that's that's not the point of uh, uh, today's presentation. But the point is that when we look at those uh, uh, those things here, we are already traversing the topology of the F5. So. We have virtual server that is running on an instance. So I can get back to my instance and look at metrics now on the whole F5 level. There you can see, I have uh, also pools on that instance. I have uh, virtual servers. I even have disks that are running within the F5 device. So if I wanted to look at the disks, there you go. These are the disks that my F5 device is running and uh, uh, those disks are themselves uh, also having some characteristics. This is all connected together. Why is it important? Because if there are any issues that are happening to a five, I can analyze them in context of the topology that I got from the data already. In my lab environment, uh, there has been some problem incurred on this F5, which I can analyze here. Now, if I click on this one, uh, this will uh, lead me to the familiar interface that you know, right? Within Dynatrace, problems are analyzed through problem cards. In this case, I have my infrastructure impacted with the CPU saturation on this uh, F5 device, and it has been detected by anomalies uh, analyzed uh, through the metrics. With those metrics that I have uh, seen on this big IP instance, uh, Dynatrace found out that there is something wrong going on with the CPU. So uh, we, have, uh, we have seen that on this, uh, on this instance, we have seen that on the virtual uh, server as well. With, uh, those, uh, uh, with those problem uh, analysis that we have seen here, of course, let me just, uh, let me just browse through this problem again because what I wanted to show you, I'm not sure whether I would show it, show it to you right now. Uh, I don't have it, but uh, yeah. With any metric that has been analyzed and the problem has been detected, you will expect that not only Dynatrace will detect the problem itself, but you can alert on it, right? So alerts can of course be set for those things that we have been looking at. Uh, and you can always define your alert on the base of metrics that you are uh, looking for. But uh, as, as we have uh, mentioned before, if we have extension that came to your environment, the five extension, this alert is already prepared for you. So this, this is one, one alert that uh, didn't come from me, it came from the extension. And this, uh, this extension, uh, it is changes, yeah. uh, this extension defined that alerting rule already for me. So the full package is coming from, uh, from Dynatrace with an extension, with the extension dashboards, with the configuration, with everything that we went through. Here you see I have my backup copy of the slides. And we end up with uh, the complete extension package that is available for you to use. Now, you may be wondering, so how does it work exactly that I have this extension and it magically starts to monitor my environment? For that purpose, I thought we would look at uh, another aspect of how to activate the extension. We call it activation because it's, it's really about the uh, making extension configuration working in an environment where you would like to, uh, to start the monitoring. I will switch to another demo tenant. And for the purpose of uh, walking you through the activation workflow, I will look for something else. Uh, for monitoring just generic uh, Cisco router. So as you can see, I have found out this extension. I can look into this. And uh, this screen you have seen before, we stopped right here with uh, the uh, monitoring configuration settings for particular extension. What's there? 
with SNMP, which we have been analyzing, this is pretty simple. Activation is about uh, providing the device address, uh, which will be queried through SNMP protocol, and then you will get the information out of it through SNMP. And we will parse this with regard to metrics, et cetera, et cetera. Regarding the question that has been uh, mentioned before, do we have REST API for it? Yes, we do. And you can actually analyze it side by side. You can do configuration in GUI and you can see how the configuration looks on the level of uh, the JSON scripts that you can exchange then through the REST API to configure uh, monitoring. So you may be wondering, what if I have 100 devices to monitor? Well, use REST API, configure this with JSON and you can monitor 100 devices easily. So that's one side of monitoring. The other one uh, that is unique to extension framework 2.0 and uh, to scalability that, Dy that Dynatrace provides. How to make this monitoring scalable uh, and uh, resource, uh, resource aware and uh, failover ready. You deploy extensions to the groups of active gates. So there is a number of active gates. These are Dynatrace devices that are responsible basically for querying remote systems. And those active gates, nego those active gates negotiate between uh, each other how the extension should be run. If uh, it requires load balancing, so there's a lot of uh, devices to monitor, they will load balance it. If one of them fails for whatever reason, can't monitor the devices, active gates will move the jobs to another one. So the monitoring will continue. And uh, last not least, uh, you may also be wondering with some extensions like F5, for example, you can get a lot of metrics. I mean, really, really like in thousands of uh, monitoring endpoints every minute. So uh, being conscious of uh, the scale and also license consumption, you may choose to limit your monitoring through what we call feature sets. So you don't have to monitor all or nothing. Uh, feature sets can be defined within the extensions and you can start monitoring low and then extend it when you, when you will need that uh, monitoring to go further. Yeah, so that's, that's basically what you get with, uh, with the extension activation. And now the next, the next thing that uh, you will be probably uh, wanting to see is uh, how do we do it for other protocols? Like, for example, Prometheus. Mm -hmm. We talked about SNMP. Uh, we talked about uh, the possibility of monitoring WMI. We wouldn't be showing this. And with Prometheus, we wanted to spend a little more time on it because there are multiple aspects uh, of it. So I will pass it uh, on to Wukash. But before going there, Andy, you had a question. Yeah, exactly. For, so first of all, thanks. And yeah, Lukas, you feel free to start sharing your screen already. If I want to recap, so what I hear is the new extensions work in a way that you have data sources, and then you can define through extensions how data that comes in from these data sources should be transformed uh, into, first of all, well, extracting the data, applying it to our SmartScape entity model, even creating new entities like what you've shown, a virtual service. With this also comes out of the box uh, dashboards or like say screens, right? Not dashboards, but more like your analysis screens. You call it the unified, um, the, un the, un the unified screens. Um, and, and I thought, so that means if I get this correctly, data source, we provide certain data sources and then you can define extensions so that you can configure where do you get the data from through a particular data source and then what to do with the data, how to split it up and kind of put it on SmartScape, how to analyze it, how to alert on it and things like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Perfect, then I wanna add some one more thing on the REST APIs. You mentioned that it's super easy to configure also at large scale. Uh, we have our REST API on top of the REST API. We have our project that we call Monaco, monitoring as code. Mm -hmm. You can even then bake this uh, into your full um, uh, configuration uh, automation, right? If you're rolling out new machines through, I don't know what you use, Terraform or something like this. And then you can automatically also roll out the Dynatrace configuration for it. Um, exactly. And now I know, Lucas, you're going to show us a different data source. I'm pretty sure one question that will come up and has come up already again, how can we build our own data sources? How can we pull data from data sources that Dynatrace doesn't support? I think that's also going to come as a question. 
Right. So I can, I think I can um, try to answer that now. So basically data source as it is, is something that we've designed as an inherent part of Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So what extension framework gives you as a capability is to be able to provide the configuration for those data sources. Nevertheless, uh, our list of data sources will be ever growing. We are slowly um, getting a jump start when it comes to extension framework 2.0. And uh, there's definitely more than our SNMP, WMI, and Prometheus um, in months and years to come. Uh, we'll be also happy uh, for you to provide feedback and uh, share with us uh, the RFEs through the community forum. We are always listening to the voice of our customers. So I hope I know that that's not the answer that uh, somebody would hope for, but nevertheless, it is what it is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, with that, I think that we can jump to the um, discussion or the presentation about Prometheus. Um, Lucas, Lucas, before yeah. you jump jump there, just uh, there is one question about REST APIs as a kind of data source. Mm -hmm. So, uh, short answer is yes, you will get it. Uh, can't we can't tell exactly when, but think about Prometheus. Prometheus uses HTTP calls to get the data out, so it's nearly like the REST API data source. It's just mm -hmm. predictable format that it has. Mm -hmm. We will make that format more flexible. So the, the path is really short from having Prometheus to having generic REST API data source as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. All right. So let's spend uh, 15 minutes or so now so that uh, yeah. we'll still have time to answer more questions at the end of the session mm -hmm. uh, to discuss the Prometheus. Uh, basically, Prometheus is... Uh, well, um, in context of our extension framework is the uh, most recent data source that we've introduced. Um, let me change the screen, right. So we are trying to first and foremost focus on scraping from exporters because that gives us um, the most uh, flexibility uh, when it comes to configuring the extensions. So what you see now is like standard uh, architectural implementation of Prometheus. You usually have Prometheus server. This Prometheus uh, server pulls the metric from exporters connected to various services or to push gateways. Um, and um, well, it stores it. It has alert manager that is able to push alerts. And um, well, you can use also Grafana, for example, to query uh, from the Prometheus server in order to visualize uh, with dashboards and everything else uh, and make sense of this data. So with the current uh, offering from Dynatrace, when it comes to the data source, we are basically trying to simplify this picture so that Dynatrace can directly scrape Prometheus format metrics from uh, the exporter um, independently uh, from having deployed any kind of uh, Prometheus server. Um, if you do have a Prometheus server, however, that's also not a problem. You do not need to uh, all of the sudden, well, changing your, to, to change your um, whole infrastructure deployment. We can also pull metrics uh, directly from the Prometheus server and uh, you can ingest them to Dynatrace. Um, one important thing before we will go to the core of the this uh, part of the presentation is uh, to understand the Prometheus scenarios because uh, we are presenting now Prometheus as something new, but it's new for the extension framework 2.0, uh, for the extensions uh, in their declarative form. Nevertheless, uh, we are already supporting Prometheus. So one of the um, first use cases where uh, we've implemented support for Prometheus uh, is when Prometheus are run, is running in Kubernetes. And uh, we have a way to work with that. Uh, we can scrape metrics uh, using uh, special Kubernetes annotation. Uh, currently, we've introduced three more scenarios with extension framework 2.0 that uh, you can make um, advantage of. Basically, if you have a Prometheus server, as you've seen, we can just scrape the metrics. If you have uh, in your stack um, any application or service that already comes with out of the box Prometheus exporter, and uh, believe me, it's plenty of those. And with every month, there are dozens of few new. 
um, that are introducing out of the box exporters that are packaged into um, the technology itself. We can seamlessly then scrape it. And then uh, in one more scenario that extension framework can help is if there is no support out of the box, but there is a third party exporter and there are hundreds of exporters currently open source and available on GitHub, uh, you can use it. And uh, then we can uh, scrape the metrics with the extensions 2.0. Also, we have uh, one more scenario that we've introduced a uh, few months ago um, as a part of our strategic alliance with um, Amazon. Uh, if you use AWS Managed Prometheus Service, we also have a dedicated purpose-built uh, uh, integration for doing that. So we've already introduced two of the Prometheus extensions in our Dynatrace hub, um, and uh, more is definitely coming. One of the most feature rich is Prometheus RabbitMQ. So it's a Prometheus data source based extension for monitoring RabbitMQ. It's, uh, it comes with practically everything what's uh, currently uh, possible with extensions framework 2.0. So that's a great showcase. And um, in order to not go the same way uh, and not uh, repeat what uh, Chris had already shown you, I wouldn't be showing now the extension uh, in live demo because I would need to go through exactly the same um, conversational points. I would like to use this opportunity to discuss a bit more based on this Rabbit uh, MQ uh, Prometheus extension. What exactly is there? How does it look like? Um, and how one builds the extension in the end? So as you can see on the right side, so, um, the extension is a package and this package contains the most important uh, file extension YAML, which is the definition of the extension, assets such as alerts or dashboards, which are in our standard setting 2.0 uh, JSON format, and uh, extension signature, so that it stays secure and uh, integral. And if we would now look at what's in the YAML exactly. So first of all, there's metadata. Uh, basically, the name of the extension, the version of the extension, the minimal version of the cluster, and the outer. Then, if uh, there are some assets added, so for example, dashboards, alerts, unified analysis screens, um, you need to specify path in this particular place. Then we have metric selectors, and metric selectors basically says say uh, how to display the metric in Dynatrace. So what would be the name of the metric? What would be the unit? Um, what would be the description? Uh, also, um, this part supports uh, simple calculations to be applied uh, to the metrics. Then we have a metric part, which uh, what it does is uh, it configures the data source itself. So it says, what's the name of the metric here? Uh, what's the metric value um, on the uh, Prometheus side? and uh, what's the type of the metric. Also, it, uh, add, it um, uh, enables you to configure feature sets and uh, tell which metric is part of, of which feature sets um, so that uh, extension that uh, you configure can have multiple groups of metrics that uh, do not need to be activated at once um, so that it can be more uh, fine-grained, for example, for a particular set of metrics that uh, are currently needed to, to be observable. Uh, then we have topology. So we can define the um, topological relations uh, related to, um, to the RabbitMQ instances. And we have analysis screen. Um, so what you've seen previously uh, when Chris was showing the F5 um, yeah, so everything starts with the metrics. That's the most important part. And uh, in this situation where you can you have only metrics uh, in your um, extension definition, you can go to the data explorer in Dynatrace product. And from there, these metrics are explorable. Moreover, from there, you are able to practically build through UI all the assets um, that normally can be packaged into extension, but it's not necessary. So metrics are enough in order to start, take leverage and uh, find value in monitoring with Dynatrace uh, through the extension framework 2.0.
Yeah, so for example, those metric selectors, which can combine multiple metrics, you can build them visually and then just copy paste into your extension definition. Exactly. Or you can you can make or you can do it here in Data Explorer. There's one more right. question. Maybe also just on, on this subject. Um, there is a um, Rahul is asking again for documentation links on especially Prometheus uh, Alert Manager. Um, is there? I think the individual extensions are all also documented on the hub. Correct. Extensions uh, correct. individually in, are in documented. The in the hub in, in the, the hub. documentation in the dynatrace Perfect. documentation there is a tutorial how to build your own extensions mm -hmm. how to understand the context mm -hmm. we will also expand the dynatrace university with uh, basically learning modules on the extensions Perfect. themselves perfect and i already put a couple of links out folks that have been asking for links uh in the chat i have sent out a couple of links to like the doc page that chris was mentioning on how to build your own uh, extension. Go ahead. Right. So here is a bit more of the same. So configuration of the screens in the AML uh, for unified analysis, configuration of the topology so that uh, your unified analysis uh, will also be aware of the uh, entity model. Instances, and messages, naturally, cues, exactly. Yeah, all and those the dashboard. Things. Sorry, I'm I'm rushing a bit, but uh, I know we are uh, a bit short on time. So hopefully, in just a few minutes, three four minutes, we'll be able to uh, jump to the questions. So few closing remarks. First of all, well, the whole idea behind the extensions framework 2.0 and data sources is that building extensions should be easy. You do not need to be a developer. You do not need to code nowadays. You do not need to be Dynatrace expert. Uh, you just need to follow a few simple steps, build the human readable YAMS file, and everything is out there in the documentation. Um, really, I would encourage you to experiment, to try to build something, to share feedback with us, what we can do better for your experience. Um, and as mentioned before, the simplest possible extension that is already uh, something valuable that you can use, you can just then um, or iterate on that and package the assets later or build the, build the assets uh, through the UI. So the simplest possible extension contains the metadata, metrics, and uh, data source configuration. So you can just list your metrics, tell us uh, how, to, how to name them, uh, tell us uh, basically where to find them in Prometheus um, or in the exporter or in the um, in the server. And that's basically it. This, after this is being packaged, signed and uploaded, you can just activate it and start to use it practically immediately. Um, there are plenty of tutorials. So I mentioned already that uh, basics you can find uh, in the Dynatrace documentation, and uh, I really encourage you to do so. Uh, moreover, we'll have a hot session on the perform that uh, Chris will be um, one of the people who will um, drive that. Um, also feel invited. That will be a hands-on training session that uh, you will learn uh, through and through how the um, extension configuration works. And uh, also on Dynatrace University, we've already produced a videos, a series of videos, um, especially on how to build a Prometheus extension. Um, it will be available very soon. Yeah, we wanted to finish on that on that uh, perform remark here because that's really an event you can't can't miss. As Wukash said, we will be running hands-on trainings, aside of course from breakout sessions when you will hear from practitioners more of what can be done uh, through extensions. But if you would like to learn, that's the place to learn. Uh, I, I will have just like 10 minutes slot during that session. This will be run by our extension services team who are hands-on practitioners and they, they do magic with the extensions they do. Many of you know them. Uh, so they, they will be running this uh, session and you can uh, hands-on really create things uh, yourself. Does it work? 
we can tell you that yes, it does. We have some customers who have already built their own extensions just using our documentation and they work in production. So can be done, believe us. Yeah, so that, that will be probably all for mm -hmm. today. We have just a couple of links for you to share. This will, of course, uh, come together with uh, the material, the presentation, just have a look into them. And he also has uh, copied them into the uh, chat window. Right now, we still have a couple of minutes. So let's uh, get to questions and uh, answer them as, as many as we can. I wanted to start with that uh, question from Raul again about Prometheus Alert Manager. So we didn't mention that. Uh, we will extend the extensions for Prometheus with uh, the possibilities to look into the logs, which I just signaled. And the alert manager uh, stream for us is a kind of log that, mm -hmm. uh, that is being created. So this will be ingested. Uh, before this will materialize, if you would like to ingest uh, alert manager events into Dynatrace right now, we have a custom extension for it. So, so just uh, contact the platform extension services team and you can get it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, what else do we have? I think there are some questions. Uh, again, I think the anonymous attendee is kind of asking the same what Mateos is asking on the uh, pulling in data. Well, actually, I think it was not Matthias, but somebody else, but pulling in data from external data sources through a, probably a REST API. He talks about mm -hmm. e-commerce extensions to Shopify and Alibaba. I would assume these SaaS solutions provide data through a REST API. And you mentioned this is an additional data source that is in the works. Yeah, REST API is in the works. In the meantime, things like Prometheus uh, for uh, getting there proactively for data. If your applications on those e-commerce platforms, just by the way, can send like stats D mm -hmm. uh, streams, we can also consume them both locally and remotely. So there are multiple ways. We need to mm -hmm. dive deeper into what that is. And uh, I can guarantee you that we will find a way. Exactly. And I think what I would also really like, and this is what was shown also by Wolfgang uh, in this last performance clinic is our just generic metric ingest, the line protocol that you also highlighted in the beginning. Any data source, and also Jason, to, to your point, you talk about talent uh, TSC um, or talent tech. Um, sorry if I pronounced this incorrectly because I'm not familiar with that technology. But if you have any external data source and you have a way to extract the data, you can just push it to Dynatrace through the metric ingest protocol, which means the metrics will be available in Dynatrace. And then Chris and Lukas, correct me if I'm wrong, once the metrics are in, I can build an extension that then basically tells me what I should do with these metrics that are coming in. The mm -hmm. same what, mm -hmm. what uh, Wolfgang Baer did in his yeah, uh, performance clinic. That's, that's, that's a very good point because we also have to mention something that we call data source less extensions. That's a tongue twister but it is something that is providing you capabilities of uh, presentation that we have looked at. So dashboards, unified analysis screens, uh, topological relationships between them, alerts for the metrics that are already in Dynatrace. And the source through which the metrics came doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You can create your extension with all those visual assets on top of any metrics that you have ingested to Dynatrace any way. Mm -hmm. Then I would like to um, talk about Mateus's question. Is there, is there any additional cost related to extension 2.0 and the metrics collected? Mm, no, that's just standard. Any metric no. that you ingest to Dynatrace uh, is consuming DDUs and same applies to any metrics that come through extensions to the zero. Mm -hmm. And then also to Jason again, he said in the first slides, he talked about Dell next to Cisco. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any Dell extension uh, planned? Because it, there's nothing to be found on the extension hub right no, now. No, no, no. Dell, Dell is just an ex ex exemplification of yeah. the infrastructure vendor who is providing hosts. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> okay. perfect. Good. Um, I have a question. If somebody has uh, a an extension that they built and they think they want to share it with the, the global community, I know we have partners that are building stuff and then they, we have a partner program and get their extensions on Dynatrace. Is there also something where community members, customers can say, hey, I've built something and I would like to share it? Uh, there will be. 
this workflow is not entirely ready, so you can't just do it as a self-service and publish on the public hub, but we are, we are working towards this. Mm -hmm. Right now, this will have to go through us, basically, the same way as partner extensions do. Mm -hmm. But if you do have, we can make it. We can make it. It's just kind of a manual process today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we are working towards making this uh, automated as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a question that goes, I guess, to what Rahul was just is just asking. Extensions in general, right? They're based on data that Dynatrace ingests from different data sources. That means the extension itself, I would assume so, is not additionally licensed. It's the data extension, underneath. No. no, right? There's no extension no. on that. Yeah? Exactly. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Perfect. Just, Perfect. just the data. Yeah, because with the extensions, you really just tell Dynatrace where to get the data from if it's not already in Dynatrace is a data source full extensions and then I like the data source less extensions or whatever you call them was a, was a yeah. really good word. Uh, then on top of that, you say, what should be done with the data? Like, should you assign the data to certain entities or should you create entities that are not there? Like your example with your load balancer, virtual servers and so on. And then also, where do you want to display the data? How do you want to display the data in those analysis screens? So. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really powerful and, and and really good. And you have examples on the documentation page and the hot days coming up. By the way, I sent the link to Perform as well in the chat. So in case you have not heard about Perform, it's coming up early February and the hot days are going to be on site in Vegas. And then I think, Lucas, you mentioned it. There's also going to be a, uh, a classroom then available later on on Dynatrace University, a virtual classroom for it as well. But at Perform, if, if you make it to Vegas, then um, definitely check out the hands-on training days. They're always extremely valuable. Perfect. Hey, Christian, Lukas, thank you so much. Um, maybe last question, we'll take this. Ludovic is asking, is there any plan to have SNP traps supported? Short answer, quick answer, yes, and that will come out soon. Perfect. Awesome. Then in this case, if people have still questions later on, right, you can go to the community, you can go to the discussion forum, you see Chris, you have Lucas's name. Um, there's a lot of ways you get in touch with us. The recording will be put up on both Dynatrace University under the Dynatrace webinar section, as well as on our YouTube channel, um, where all the other performance clinics are, hopefully within a day or two. All the links in the chat, make sure you grab them and... Thank you so much. Stay healthy. And because this is the last show, it was on Nicholas Day, because here in Austria, and I know, Chris, you said as well, uh, in some parts of Poland, at least, you're in celebrating. Poland as well. yeah. yeah, we are celebrating yeah. St. Nicholas Day. So so this is, was a little Nicholas present today. <laughs> right. the, the show for you. Okay. Thank you. And with this, goodbye. All the best. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.